Well, folks, I think I'm done with Mercenaries. I tried. I really gave a good faith effort to like this game mode, but uh, I think it's time to give up on Mercenaries. And in this video, I just want to walk through that experience and talk about why this isn't the game mode for me. Forgive me, I'm not super organized on this one. I'm just going to kind of shoot from the hip. I was planning to make a video on uh, the upcoming mini set announcement, but it's not here today. So this video is slotting in instead. And we're going to have a little chat here about uh, mercenaries and why I'm not in love with the mode. Maybe it has a little something to do with the screen here behind me with those $10 Rexar coins, but we'll, we'll get into that. Now, before I get into it, I want to say if you are enjoying mercenaries, like who, who cares what I think, right? Like you don't have to listen to my advice or, or hear me out, like enjoy your game mode. I don't want to take that away from you. I'm, I'm thrilled that you're enjoying it. And there are people out there who are, who like grindy gotcha games. Mercenary seems to be scratching an itch there. It's just not working for me and uh, a lot of other folks. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I also got to say, I'm not really interested in shame and condemnation or whatever else. Uh, for me, it's pretty straightforward. Blizzard made a game mode that is not all that fun for me, and it's way too expensive for me. And I'm just going to talk about those points as they impact me. I'm not trying to attach any extra value judgments or statements here. All right. So all that said, let's uh, let's just talk about my mercenaries experience here, which I think some of you will share. But mine has a few distinctions here and there. So uh, when mercenaries was announced, I was excited, of course, new game mode, a lot of opportunity for content creators, cool YouTube videos, etc. Right. Just fun in Hearthstone's great. I like the game. So pretty hyped uh, when we got more details, a little more hesitation and trepidation kind of uh, started trickling in because we started thinking it sounds like a gotcha game like is this raid shadow legends and hearthstone so some hesitation there of course monetization and sorts of things always make us nervous in free-to-play games so that was our next step uh then once mercenaries finally got around to coming out many 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 months later uh blizzard gave me an early access account i got to play for like three or four days with fully maxed out characters and all the equipments and all the abilities and i was like man mercenaries is actually really really fun i like the pvp a lot it's pretty cool when you can mix and match all these different characters and try out all this stuff. And I came away from the early access thinking, oh, this is nice. I really think I'll enjoy PvP a lot. And then once the game hits and I got into the, the actual gameplay loop and I saw just how much grind and time and effort was required to get to that game state that I had enjoyed so much in the pre-release, became clear to me that this game was really not as much for me because I don't enjoy really repetitive tasks against PVE. It's hard for me to feel engaged by that. I, I want to be creative and do wacky stuff and weird stuff. Some people like that gameplay. That's totally valid to enjoy. I'm not, again, trying to take that away from you. It's just not for me. So, you know, for the first two weeks or whatever it was since Mercenaries came out, because I've stopped playing for about the last two or three days, um... I gave a really good shot. I was grinding PVE every day for like three hours, maybe more, occasionally less, of course, but I was like really trying my best. And to some of you, three hours won't sound like a lot, but if you think about an average video game player, three hours a day is a ton to commit to playing Mercenaries or any game, right? Like a lot of people just don't have that much time to just mindlessly fling through PVE tasks. And sure, some people are doing it while watching TV and et cetera. It's kind of a background task. All that's reasonable, and that's why it's a good fit for some people. But for me, I just can't quite commit that much time. And even committing something like three hours a day on average for the first couple weeks, I still feel like I'm dramatically behind other people in Mercenaries. And even when I was queuing up into PvP the last three or four days, I'd be going in without characters that didn't have maxed abilities. I'd be playing like a Cairn that still only had a level three stomp ability or whatever it is, right? Uh, and then my opponents, of course, would have level five stomps for their cairns that have fully maxed characters with higher stats. So I wasn't really even able to compete after two weeks of what I thought was a pretty reasonably big commitment. Uh, it just didn't work out. And that was around 6,700 to 7,000 MMR for reference for people out there who are curious up to about like three days ago when I've decided like I just can't keep up anymore. So essentially for me, I, I really like the idea of this mercenaries PVP experience. So essentially for me, I really, really like the idea of this, you know, end game mercenaries PVP experience. I didn't like the sort of middle steps getting up to that PVP experience. And in fact, hate the PVE grind that is required to be competitive in a PVP environment. 
Initially, we were told that uh, PvP matchmaking would sort of accommodate for this, and you could go at your own pace, and you'd be matched up against people that are sort of your strength, so there's no need to grind, there's no urgency, but there's sort of two challenges to that. Number one, you are matched up against people that are stronger than you. You know, I don't know if it's still happening up to today. It's been a couple of days since I've tried, but I very much was facing people with stronger teams. I even did some extreme test cases where I'd take like level 15 characters into PvP and my opponents would still have full level 30 teams. So there's quite a loose band of matchmaking to ensure that you get real opponents because of course the other side of the problem was early on in the experience you were playing only AI opponents in PvP which also wasn't a rewarding PvP experience. So basically, both sides of the spectrum, whether versus AI or whether versus stronger opponents, it wasn't rewarding until you get to this fully complete, maxed out environment where you have characters that are on par with your opponents. That's when it feels really, really good to PvP. Besides that, the other exciting aspect of PvP for me was the choice, being able to mix and match teams, try different things, swap out equipments, and when you have a really limited roster and number of choices and you feel like you have to play your characters that are the strongest or most maxed out, you don't really get as much creativity or diversity of options when you're building your PvP teams. You might kind of have one or two lineups that you take in and you have to play those over and over again while farming up and increasing the strength of your other characters. So this gameplay loop of progression for the sake of progression and forced PvE encounters that are really repetitive and grindy I just can't get into that. I just don't like spending three hours a day slamming into air elemental bounties or slamming into Fellwood bounties lately or whatever it is. It just takes too long to get to the experience that I want out of mercenaries. Now, is it possible that if I hadn't been given that kind of preview taste of what a complete build was like, that I wouldn't have so much urgency to get back there? Maybe, right? Like maybe I'm biased. I can't say that I'm not. Uh, it's hard to identify those things, but I don't really think that's the problem. I think it's more the choice and, and creativity that doesn't exist for me. It's the repetitiveness that's driving me crazy. Uh, if I had more choices, if I had flexibility, if I could try out weird compositions, that's where I'd be excited to play and certainly more excited to make content as well. As it stands right now, I have like two PvP builds and mercenaries. I don't want to grind those on stream all day. I don't want to make videos on two random PvP builds. It's just not interesting or engaging to me, even if it might be to some people out there. So essentially, PvP is gate kept behind this PvE experience, and I just cannot bridge that gap. I'm not willing to spend 60, 80, 100 hours, whatever it is, in PvE to get to the point where I'm able to compete in PvP. Now, on top of that, uh, let's talk about what's behind me here finally, uh, since I'm too lazy to put in nice, good backgrounds. Of course, if I wanted to get a little bit more leg up on completing my characters, there's a way to do that, right? I could buy stuff on the shop. I could buy packs. I could buy coins, as you see here behind me. I could even just buy Rexar, who's the only character I don't have in Mercenaries anymore. And here's the thing. I actually already bought 4,000 gold worth of packs on top of the pre-order packs and I still have so many characters who need way more coins to fully upgrade their equipments and abilities. Like, I'm not even close. Like, I've been playing Karen a ton. I've been running in, running him in task farm stuff. I'm still so short on Karen coins. I think I'm on, like, task 9 for Karen, which, you know, some people are like, well, you should get to task 18. And it's like, well, yeah, of course. That takes another three or four hours of grinding or whatever, right? Dedicated to care. And that's the problem is to unlock these tasks, to get this equipment, to get enough coins. It's just so much work and you can't skip tasks with money, but you certainly can skip coins uh, with money. Because even though I have Karen up to like task seven and I have all of Karen's equipment unlocked, I'm still not remotely close to fully upgrading my Karen. So what could I do? I could go buy some coins. For $10, I could get 300 coins. Now, if you're playing Mercenaries, you know that 300 coins is basically two upgrades on an ability or an item. It kind of depends on where you're at in the range of upgrades, but they range from 50 to 175 coins. So on average, let's say it's like two levels of an upgrade on either abilities or equipment, which basically means since abilities and equipment can either go to tier five or tier four respectively, Okay, we get it, Hearthstone. Uh, that essentially means that it's like 15 to $20 worth of coins to upgrade a single ability 
I'm not doing the real math here. There's some real math out there, but essentially you're talking about like 15 to $20 to upgrade a mercenary single ability plus or minus a few bucks here and there. Uh, as my math is bad. And if there's six of those right now, obviously you're going to get free to play stuff. You don't have to com commit fully. This might just be like the final 300 coins you need to finish. But for me, it's still just so crazy to think that it's $10 for just a tiny sliver of a portion of a character's strength. And that's just one character for $10. There are entire indie game deck builder PVE experiences for like 15, 20 bucks. It's a whole game. Like I think of Arcanium, an indie deck builder that I love. It is basically mercenaries. You play with different characters. There's still a deck. It's not just abilities, but they kind of function very similarly. There's three on board. They fight three opponents, but it's, it's got a much more in-depth gameplay loop. It's got way better like uh, overworld map and uh, decision making and all these different story elements. And there's character equipment. It, it's basically mercenaries, but the whole game is like 20 bucks. And it's like got as much depth as mercenaries. There aren't technically as many characters. Mercenaries has more heroes to collect, but you know, there's more depth within the, each individual character as well. So so it's like 20 bucks for an entire game that has just countless hours of entertainment or, you know, maybe 30, 40 bucks going into a single mercenary. And we have seen other people with mercenaries, just the card itself, just the mercenary listed for $15. Now, I don't want to be unfair. Like mercenaries has a better gotcha free to play system than most gotcha games. If you play like Raid Shadow Legends or whatever, there's way more gates. There's way this like energy system and all this stuff and getting heroes upgraded is way harder. People are having a much better time in free to play with mercenaries than other gotcha games, which is an important thing to acknowledge. And, you know, I don't want to take away from that because if you like gotcha games, mercenaries free to play might be better for you than ever. But I do also think it's sort of an unfair anchor and, and sort of counter because Gotcha games are horrible models. They're incredibly expensive. They're predatory. So to anchor mercenaries saying, well, it's it's definitely better than those really terrible, terrible things. And, you know, I understand, right? The free-to-play games, we have to subsidize free-to-play players with whales or with spenders. I get that there's a balance there. But for me, it always feels like in Hearthstone, for people who spend money, they never really feel rewarded for their expense. I think... You know, my philosophy is, and of course, somebody at Blizzard who's a monetization expert and knows this business in and out will challenge this and say I'm insane and stupid and I'll cost them millions of dollars. Sure. But my logic is and my theory is when people spend money, that's a behavior we want to reinforce. We want to reward. We want them happy so that they're spending money again in the future. I feel like I hear over and over again how many people say they bought this, they bought that and they hated it. Like, oh, I didn't get any luxury cards like, oh, man. I got terrible mercenaries that I can't play. So many times when people spend money, they're negatively punished for what they receive. They aren't positively reinforced at all. They get nothing. They come away really sad. They feel like they wasted their money. That creates a disconnect. They're unlikely to spend money again in the future. So for me, I think we should have really rewarding experiences. There should be ways to spend, you know, a, a hefty sum and get everything. Just like really uh, make your your purchases feel like they were awesome instead of mediocre and expensive and awful which to me when i look at this stuff right here this looks awful and feels terrible actually this rex armor bundle is not crazy like 20 packs plus a free legendary is like that's actually one of the better ones i've seen but there are so many other bundles and offers i've seen and 300 coins for 10 dollars to me it just sounds completely bonkers honestly so you know it's a mix and match maybe there's some a b testing happening here but the fact that this exists at all and like when I start doing the math on other games and other experiences, it's just crazy to me. Like I just started playing Guardians of the Galaxy, a $60 AAA title. The amount of like art and voice acting and incredible everything, gameplay experiences. It's just such a rich, amazing experience for 60 bucks to think that if I wanted to just outright buy and fully upgrade a mercenary, a single mercenary, it might be about the same cost as that experience is mind boggling to me the the disparity of experiences is just completely absurd to me so i didn't even plan this video to be a, a criticism of the monetization but here we are i just can't get behind how expensive stuff like ten dollars for two ability upgrades for a single character 
it's just mind boggling to me. I, I just can't comprehend how this is successful, how people spend on this, how it makes any sense for Blizzard and how people don't just come away incredibly disappointed by this offering when they purchase it, if they ever even do. So anyway, I, to, to make that an actionable point, right? Why does the monetization matter here? Well, I, I don't want to have to spend to keep up. I, I'm just like you guys. I have to spend to keep up if I want to. And I don't, Blizzard doesn't give us freebies like this. We don't just get free maxed accounts or anything other than for like promotional purposes. So I, I don't want to spend the time that require is required to keep up in mercenaries. And I don't want to spend the money that is required to keep up in mercenaries. So what am I left to do here? I, I think I'm left to just give up on the game mode. I intend to still cover news for mercenaries. Like whenever there's new heroes, I'll talk about them, walk through them. I'll keep an eye on the mercenaries meta and like still, you know, read up and watch videos and all these sorts of things so that I am a capable commentator for mercenaries content, right? As, as news and patch notes hit and stuff, just like I do for battlegrounds. I want to be able to keep up and, and offer news to people that care. But as a person experiencing the game mode, I just cannot see myself playing it long term anymore. I just cannot commit that much time. I'm way more interested by other games, other projects, other game modes in Hearthstone. I'd rather spend my time being productive in those and offering good stuff and good content for people who want to watch those game modes as opposed to mercenaries. So, you know, you'll still hear me talk about mercenaries. You'll still see news for mercenaries, but I do not think you're ever going to see me play mercenaries content, at least for the foreseeable future. Maybe things will change. Maybe the models will shift and I'll be able to get back in or there'll be some catch up mechanisms later that help. But for now, I just cannot commit that much time or energy. Now, I hate making videos like this and not like giving any recommendations or, you know, like here's what we could do to make it better. I want to be constructive, right? And not just focus on all the downsides. On the other side of things, I sort of hate recommending ideas to game designers. Like they've obviously thought through a lot of things and made decisions and know way more about their game mode and have way more access to data than I do. So in some ways, I know this is pointless for the people who it matters to, but nonetheless, in a good faith effort to be productive and be constructive, I, you know, here's a few things I think we could do to improve the mercenaries experience for me. And it would make me want to play the game more. Number one, and probably most important and the only one that matters <laughs> is uh, making more things accessible through PVP experiences. In other words, don't force me to play a ton of PVE just to do things like unlock tasks to upgrade my characters. If I'm interested in PVP, let me PVP and do progression through PVP, not just PVE. Number two, I would try to drastically uh, increase the diversity of experiences in PVE when things like the mystery node only have a few options, there's like sabotage, the potato, the mysterious stranger and warp. Those aren't really that compelling or interesting and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of different gameplay experiences. In fact, the potato showing up in every level is weird. Why isn't it like an exploding mushroom or something occasionally with a different mechanic for each region where it's just not always this, you know, hot potato essentially. The hot potato design's cool, that's good, but imagine if we had like seven other of those that could surprise you, right, and could do different things. So just increasing uh, the, the ways a run can unfold and surprise you and do different things would go a long way towards making the PvE more engaging. Number three, for me, I would decrease the amount of grind necessary to keep up and, and progress your characters. I'm sure there's some modeling on Blizzard's end that this grind makes sense and kind of fits their time spans and stuff for when they want to release content. So this one may fall on deaf ears, but I think if I'm somebody who plays this game professionally and was willing to dedicate you know a few hours a day to grind this, and I still feel dramatically behind, I feel like casual players out there who only have an hour a day or something are probably just hopeless and have no chance to keep up. And some people will say, well, yeah, it's designed that way to increase monetization. But honestly, you can't monetize tasks. You have to spend the time to grind tasks. So this isn't necessarily a monetization problem. It's more like a forced engagement problem as, a force, as opposed to a forced monetization problem. So I think it's just gotta be a little easier. And yes, it may be easier than other gotcha games, but again, I think that's sort of a bad faith anchor to game modes that we shouldn't really try to replicate or honor their gameplay loops. I think we should try to make one that's good and suitable and, you know, palatable for people who play Hearthstone and most of them are more casual than you and I because you're here watching this video and this just demands too much of our time I think. Number four make it cheaper to buy stuff like I think people want to spend money on games they like they want to support it but it's just like a lot of these purchases don't feel good or don't feel rewarding even packs 
don't feel that great to have coins in them. So even like 20 packs, 25 bucks sounds good in theory. Like in normal Hearthstone, that'd be a solid deal for what we expect. Still, still expensive for the record. We always have to like offer that caveat. But you know, just make people feel rewarded when they spend money, and they're gonna want to spend more money in your game. I, I think that's my, my theory at least. Maybe totally wrong. Who knows? And I guess that's enough good recommendations. I'm sure I can think of a few more if I took some time to sit down and and ponder. But uh, those are the ones that come to the top of mind. If you guys have recommendations for how you'd like to see mercenaries improve, some things that might get you to play the game mode, curious to hear those in the comments below. Uh, and look, you're welcome to leave whatever comments you want. I don't encourage anybody to like bash or shame or condemn, right? I, like clearly there are some things here that are greedy as most people would call them from corporate standards. But keep in mind that most of the designers who work on this stuff aren't the people making these decisions at a top level. They probably don't want the game to be as, as greedy as some of this stuff appears. So take it easy on a lot of the Hearthstone devs. There's good people working there who are trying their best to make a good game. They miss the mark sometimes. I'm acknowledging that. They've missed the mark for me. This is not a game mode for me at all, but there might be others out there who still enjoy it. And uh, as long as we can rein some of these monetization practices in, you know, mercenaries might chug along fine for the people who enjoy it. It's just, I'm not going to be one of those people as it currently stands. So yeah, anyway, I don't know. That's your video for today. I probably rambled a ton and I doubt anybody watched this because I literally didn't change the background once. But uh, <laughs> that's good enough. It was supposed to be a mini set day, I thought. I keep thinking the mini set's going to come out. So we got, uh, we got Mercenaries chat instead. So anyway, leave your thoughts below. Thanks as always for watching. And until next time, game on.